Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to worship. Y'all thought I was lying last week about the Sunday after Easter, didn't you? See what I mean? See what I mean? Yeah. And what did y'all do to these guys over here? <laughs> it's like 4, 45. <laughs> so... Uh, Valon and Martha will uh, help out. They'll, they'll, they're coming on over. All right. Well, now's a great time to go ahead and check in on your Messiah app for us. If you can do that, get out your uh, mobile devices and check in. We greatly appreciate that. Those of you who are uh, worshiping online, great to have you in worship with us this morning. Please check in on the Messiah app as well. If you don't have it, there it is. You can scan your, uh, the QR code. It'll take you right to uh, whatever app store is on your phone, and you can download the Messiah app. Uh, today and begin using it. Lots of great stuff that's in there. So while you're checking in, a couple things we want to let you know about. Uh, first off uh, is that uh, don't forget that uh, Lin Deacon Lynette is looking for people to greet on Sunday mornings, okay? Um, and uh, that's a very important role on Sunday mornings. Uh, people make up their mind whether they're going to come back to a church uh, from the street to the seat, and uh, it's just uh, really important that we make sure people feel welcome, that they know where to go, their questions are answered, so and that they're greeted and seated. So if you can help out doing that, please email Deacon Lynette. Her email is lynette at messiahlc.org. All right, great way to re-engage now coming out of the pandemic. Um, also, I saw this in the email, and I wanted to share it with you all. Uh, Debbie Kendall has a uh, discovery time class on Sundays during the 930 discovery time hour education hour um, called Sunday therapy and it's soul care right now and it is tending to our souls um, coming out of this pandemic right what do we how can we take care of ourselves where can we find God in the midst of everything so uh, just a soul tending uh, uh, type of class so it looks absolutely great, fits in with our series that we're going to be starting today called Faithful, um, filling up our faith when we're running on empty. Uh, that begins today. Uh, so great time to, uh, if you're looking for um, an education class, go check that one out. They're over in Cottage One, okay, Cottage One on Sundays, all right? New Beginnings is coming up on uh, May 15th and 22nd. If you're looking for a church home and you feel like Messiah might be the one, come uh, to our New Beginnings class, find more about our mission and vision, and uh, that way you'll be able to make an informed decision. We hope that you will join our faith family. So that begins on the 15th. Um, we have a confirmation uh, Sunday today. And we gave everybody um, a handout today that shows you all the confirmation students that will be reaffirming their faith today at our 1045 worship. We're really excited for them. So please take a look at that um, for today. Pray for them. Pray for their family. All right. We as a church, both in baptism and in confirmation, make certain promises to uh, these kiddos. And that is that we will serve with them, we will pray for them, and we will invest in them, all right? How do you invest in them? Just by your Sunday offerings. When you invest in them, it, through your Sunday offerings, you help us support youth and family ministry at this church. That is an easy way for you to do that. Praying for them a daily and then also serving with them, all right, uh, is also important. So uh, they will be reaffirming their faith today at 1045. So please pray for them and their families on this joyous day. And speaking of joyous day, we also have a baptism at 930. Uh, the Lance will be uh, baptizing their child today. So uh, lots of celebratory stuff happening today here at Messiah. We're really excited about that. And speaking of excitement, Next Sunday, even if you're not going to be here, tune in. We have a huge, and I'm talking huge, announcement regarding Chrysalis Christian Preschool. All right? You don't want to miss this one. I'm telling you. This is going to be a huge announcement. That's all I'm going to say. All right? So, hey, I got to get y'all back some kind of way. All right? So, yeah. So, next week, big announcement regarding Chrysalis. All right? Russell, come on up, Russell. Uh, Russell's going to talk to you a little bit about uh, Kairos, the prison ministry, which is an absolutely fantastic ministry uh, that um, has uh, come about here at Messiah and what those little strips in your pews actually mean. Russell? 
Oh, well, composting? It's, it's, it's a... a <laughs> Awesome. Thank you, Russell. God's blessings to y'all this weekend for an amazing, amazing ministry. All right, well, let's stand and begin our worship. If you'll please stand, we're going to go into our opening hymn. Matt's going to lead us in that uh, hymn number 864. Brothers and sisters, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. This is the peace of victory for our God.
of all creation, blessing, honor, glory, and might be to God and the Lamb forever. Amen. This is the peace, the victory for our God. Let us pray. Almighty God, we have celebrated with joy the festival of our Lord's resurrection. We pray today that you would graciously help us to show the power of the resurrection in all that we say and all that we do. We pray this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, both one God, now and forever. Amen. Today, uh, there is a uh, outline in the pamphlet that you were handed for today. Um, you can follow along and with that. There's also a couple of questions there. We'll get to those in just a minute as well. <clears throat> so we start a new series today called Faithful, um, how to fill our faith when we feel like we're running on empty. And we've all met someone along the way. Maybe we just heard about somebody, but probably most of us have met somebody along the way who has what you might consider an unshakable faith. Anybody meet any of those people before? It's like, it doesn't matter what happens, right? Their faith is just solid. And you look at them and you're like, man, how do they do that, right? Uh, and, and nothing shook them. So it was just amazing. And when you meet people like that, you wonder, of course, I wonder, of course, 
uh, I wonder, how would I respond if that happened to me? Right? It's like, man, what, what would my response be? This always happens to me when I travel abroad, by the way. When I'm sitting in this 10 by 10 hut made out of manure and mud where the people have nothing and they're bringing me coffee and popcorn and snacks, probably two weeks wages worth of stuff, right? And yet they, they don't have anything and yet there they are, they feel blessed. You know, I hear it time and time again. Oh, we're just so blessed. We're just so happy, right? And I'm lo- looking at myself. I'm going, would I, would I have that kind of faith if I was living like that? I don't know, right? And you probably had this with experience with people as well, that no matter what they're faced with in life, they're just confident. They're confident in their faith. And they experience suffering and they experience pain, they experience disappointment within the context of knowing that there's a God who knows, that there's a God who cares, that there's a God who sometimes intervenes, and there's a God that sometimes doesn't seem to intervene, but their faith is just, I don't know, unshakable, right? So the question that we're going to ask and hopefully answer in this series, by the way. <laughs> what does this answer? Hopefully I'll answer it by the end of the series, is this. Where does that faith come from, and how do we get it? <clears throat> Where does it come from? How do we get it? Right? Because I don't know about you, but during the pandemic over those past two years, there were times where my faith was just down in the dumps. And I'm sitting there, I'm going, okay, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? Right? Is this going to work out? Right? Are we going to come out of this as a church? Right? Nothing in seminary prepared any of us for any of that. So if you're looking for faith, if you're looking to regain faith, If you're looking to just strengthen your faith, this series is for you, all right? So here we go. When you follow Jesus through the Gospels, you'll discover that there were two things that Jesus was amazed at, all right? We see this word in Greek that's translated into amaze, and it usually happens two different ways, all right? The Greek term that's translated as amazed is also can be translated as marveled, okay? Um, So the first one we find in the text for today. Jesus is going along with the apostles and the centurion, this Roman centurion, right? Walks up to Jesus and he asks Jesus for a favor. Now, Jesus' disciples are not thrilled that Jesus is talking to a Roman centurion. Remember, they're the enemy, right? They're the bad guys, all right? And they certainly weren't in favor of centurions who worked for the Romans. And they're sitting there, and they're standing around. They're looking at this scene. They hear what the centurion's saying. The centurion is asking for Jesus to come to his house. And they're thinking, you know what? If Jesus is he really is who he says he is, the Son of God, surely he's not going to go to the home of a Roman. Surely. Gentile, right? He would contaminate himself as a good Jewish person, right? He would become ceremonially unclean. And especially if he's going to touch and heal one of these guys' servants. All right? And so I bet they're standing around and they're expecting Jesus to say no. But in fact, Jesus says, sure. Let's go. And they're like, wait, what? No way. And he offers to follow him home. But... Here's the weird part. The centurion turns to Jesus and he says, hey, you don't need to do that. 
You don't need to come with me because I know how this works. You see, I represent the Roman Empire. And when I tell people to do things, they, they go and do them. And I know who you are. I've been watching you. I know there's more to you than people think. And I know you could not do the things that you do if it were not under something bigger or someone bigger than yourself. So like me, all I know that you need to do is say the words and it'll happen. Just like me. Right? Issue the command and I know it will be done. And when Jesus heard this, the text says, there's the Greek word, he was amazed. Here's the Greek word, thalmazo. Okay? He was amazed, astonished, impressed. Okay? All the words that you can translate that word to. Jesus was amazed. But by what? What was Jesus amazed about? Because people ask him for favors all the time, right? Oh, can you do this? Oh, can you do this? Oh, can you heal? Oh, can you feed? Oh, can you do that? Right? In fact, just before this, in Matthew's gospel, he heals a leper. But the word doesn't show up in that story. He isn't amazed when the leper asks Jesus to heal him. Well, fortunately, the text actually tells us why Jesus was so amazed. This go around. Why was he amazed? Why was he amazed? Because of the guy's faith. Right? It says, Truly I tell you, I have, found, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. He was amazed at the guy's faith. There's one of those guys that we were talking about, right? At the beginning. One who, regardless of what happens, it's just unshakable faith. And remember, this is a Roman guy, by the way. And some people feel that later on, this is the same Roman centurion, right, who's standing near the cross, who says, truly, this was the Son of God, right, later on in the, in, in the crucifixion story. But that is the thing that Jesus was most amazed about. It was his faith. Great faith. Bold, active, and informed faith. We've heard of Amazing Grace. This is Amazing Faith. We could write a new song. Right? But what made it so amazing? What made it so different than the other encounters that Jesus had with other people? It's because it's the centurion who finally puts two and two together. He understood who Jesus was. And he recognized the uniqueness of Jesus. And when he realizes who Jesus is, he goes all in. Right? Fun fact for you. Jesus was never amazed at anyone's knowledge. He was never amazed at anyone's knowledge. Let's go back to the, to, to, to the guy who comes to Jesus and says, hey, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Goes, oh, well, you're the religious expert. Why don't you tell me? Right? Oh, it says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, strength, love the neighbor as yourself. And he's like, oh, you're a smart guy. You got the answer right. And he's like, now go and do it. And he's like, oh. <laughs> he wasn't amazed that the guy knew the answer. We don't see this word. He's never amazed by knowledge. You can memorize all the verses in the scripture that you want to. Good for you. You can memorize. Jesus was never like, wow, you're smart. 
Wow, great insight. The thing that always got his attention was not brain knowledge, but was extraordinary faith that was actually could be seen. Right? Faith that simply wasn't just in their head, but faith that was lived out in the reality of life. Right? Yeah. Now remember there were two things that amazed Jesus. The first was great faith. The second is the opposite, the lack of faith. Great faith and lack of faith. He was simply amazed at the lack of faith. Peter walking out onto the water. We see the word again. You of little faith, why did you doubt? Right? Peter knows the knowledge in one part of the scripture that Jesus is the Messiah. But then when he refuses to act like it, what does Jesus tell him to do? Get behind me, Satan. And here's what we learn. Here's what we learn if we follow Jesus through scriptures. Jesus' agenda was what? His, his agenda was his followers and all of us, even today, here in the 21st century, would become people of great faith. Not of great knowledge. Of great faith. Active in spite of, going to believe anyway, faith. Faith that can be seen, not just spoken. And this is where it could get, get confusing. It wasn't hope or optimism, because that is different than faith. Hope and optimism are different than faith. Okay? And they're different because of this. Faith always has an object. All right? Faith always has an object. When you get onto a plane, you hope and are optimistic that that plane's going to get you from point A to point B. You don't have faith. What you have faith in is what? The plane and the pilot. See? It has an object, right? Faith is different than hope and optimism. And when Jesus talked about faith, it wasn't this, oh, we're going to be fine. Oh, I have faith everything's going to work out. Now that's hope and optimism. Okay? There's a difference. What amazed Jesus was not the hope and optimism of the centurion. It was the object of faith that the centurion had. And the object of the centurion's faith was what? Jesus, Yes. You know, I know you knew it. Yes, Jesus, right? To put his trust in him. In fact, we just heard this because on the night of his arrest, Jesus tells his disciples the very same thing, right? As he's sitting in the upper room, all right? What does he tell them? Hey, don't let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, don't you? Yeah, yeah, we believe in God. And this is what's so interesting here, because the writer of John does something in Greek that's nowhere else in the New Testament, all right? There is no work for, in Greek for trust. There isn't. There's just the word believe, or beliefs, or belief, singular. And what he does is, he says, you believe in God, don't you? Believe in God, right? And he takes the Greek word, the verb for belief, and he marries it to the, prop, uh, to the preposition in, E-N in this case in Greek, right? And he ties the two together. And this is the first time these two words ever appear together in the Greek New Testament. And what does he say? He says, believe in God and also believe in me. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe in me. You believe in God, don't you? 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 you believe in, okay, do you believe in me as well? Do you believe in Jesus as well? Do you believe in me? Do you believe in me and who I am? 
It communicates something beyond it. And so sometimes in, in, in the English translation, you'll say, trust in me and trust also in God, right? But there's no word for trust in Greek, okay? It communicates that trust, but that's not literally what it's saying. It's saying, then believe in, if you believe in God, then believe also in me. Why does he do that? Why does he say, if you believe in God, then believe also in me? Why, is he, why would he say, if you trust in God, then you also should trust in me? One, he wants to be the object of our faith, right? Then believe in me. He wants to be the object of our faith. And nothing else. Not money, not our bank accounts, not, you know, whoever it, we, we check off on the ballot. None of those guys and gals. He wants the object of faith to be in him. And Jesus tells his disciples, look, if you trust in God, then you also should trust in me. If you believe in God, then you should also believe in me. And what he's doing here is he's basically saying, you know what? If you know if, of what we know about God and who God is and what God is like, you know how you find that out? Through him. If you believe in God, then you also believe in me. Because guess what? You get to know who God is what God is like through me. We learn about God through Jesus. If you want to know who God is like, don't start in Genesis. Look, in, look to Jesus. Start with him. And then whatever you learn about God through Jesus, then go back and read Genesis. Jesus was the perfect representation of God. And in this moment in the upper room, he's telling his disciples and us, look no further than him if you want to know what God is like. Put your faith and belief and trust in me so you'll know what God is like and who God is so that I can point you towards God. I want to be the object of your faith and nothing else. It's not so that you can know more about God, but so that you can establish a relationship with God. This is about belief in, right? And why is that important? It's because the foundation and currency of any relationship is what? Trust, right? You can have everything else, but if you don't have trust in the other person, that relationship is never going to work. And so throughout all of his ministry, Jesus is inviting people to place their confidence, their trust, their belief in him as he reflects who God really is. And that is exactly what the centurion does, which is why Jesus is so amazed. He trusts in who Jesus is. He believes in who Jesus is. Jesus was the object of his faith, not Caesar, not anybody in Rome, not the doctor down the street, only Jesus. What an amazing faith, right? Huh. So how do we get that, right? How do we get it? How do we get that kind of faith and trust? Well, over the next several weeks, we're going to look at what I call five faith catalysts, okay? What is a catalyst? A catalyst is something that ignites something, right? It starts something. So I'm hoping these five faith catalysts will ignite your faith again so that you can help your faith grow and it can help blow it up, all right? And my hope is, is that by diving into these five catalysts, it can help you to begin rebuilding and reestablishing your faith in not only God, but in Jesus. Because if we look to Jesus, we know who God is, right? So whether you're looking to regain your faith, whether you're looking to strengthen your faith, or whether you're looking to actually find faith for the very first time, I hope you'll be here. I hope you'll tune in for this entire series. All God's people said, amen. <clears throat> All right, let's stand and sing our next hymn.
consist of people that I've grown up with. The teachers at the church have helped me grow in my faith by helping me understand more about God and answering any questions I have. The main people that have influenced my faith journey are my dad and my Oma. They have taught me to be a good disciple to everyone I meet by sharing ways I can help other people's daily lives with the financial and Christianity sides of it as they both have been doing the same. Many people have affected my life and growth and faith. My grandpa is a good example. Because of him being a pastor, he taught me things about the Bible and faith. We spent a lot of time together when I was a baby because he was my babysitter and definitely it left a good impression. There are many people who helped me during my journey, including my parents, the people at Messiah, including Miss Michelle, Miss Don, Miss Danielle, Miss Noodle, Miss Stephanie, Miss Eva, Mr. Justin, Mr. Matt, Mr. Andrew, and possibly Pastor Brett. I probably exaggerate when I say my faith in God makes a light in dark times because it really does. Whenever I get sad or I don't know what to do, I get lost at first, but then I remember I have a God to count on. I follow my faith by choosing not to be rude and hurt others. Faith has also affected my decisions by making me think, would God want me to do this before I do something? As a person of faith, I can make a difference in the world by helping people who need help. I believe as a Christian that we are all safe in the end and there is one God. I also believe that we are here to help others. Every night since before I can even remember with my family and I say a few prayers including one to bless our loved ones. When we say this prayer I like to bless everyone in this world because I believe everyone should have a chance with God. I feel like the rite of affirmation of baptism shows I will continue to spread faith and it shows that I will always be a part of the church. I feel like the rite of affirmation of baptism is also a milestone in someone's life because someone can finally feel accepted. The rite of affirmation of baptism to me means that as a person of faith, I should have a strong relationship with God. I can accomplish this by going to church on Sundays, praying, developing a relationship with others, and practicing God's word. And lastly, I think my baptism is the root of my religious life because before I moved in with Sydney, I had no idea or who God was. Once I was baptized, I felt like I was part of something special. Confirmation over the last two years has helped my understanding of Bible history and how it applies to our lives. But even with these answers, I expect to find many new questions as I move forward in life. I may not know the answers to these questions right away, but I know I can always look to the Bible, talk to family, church friends, or to other people at Messiah. The rite of affirmation of baptism to me means renewing my faith once promised during baptism. I have grown physically and mentally since my baptism, and I want to keep the blessing of growing up in church. The rite of affirmation of baptism is important to me because it means that I am affirming my baptism from when I was a baby, and that I accept that Jesus gave his life for me and others. It means that I will live my life through faith and helping others. It also helps me understand that I can forgive anyone in my life and not carry animosity around with me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of a Virgin Mary. Suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, was buried, he descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, and the communion of saints. The forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Shall we? Congratulations to them. And if you have been around Messiah long enough, yes, you are correct. The first of Pastor Larry Keeney's grandchildren are being confirmed today. <laughs> crazy, crazy, crazy. So brothers and sisters, let's share the peace with each other. For those of you worshiping online, share the peace in the comment section with those who may be worshiping with you as well. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share the peace with those who are worshiping around you. All right, our offerings are an act of worship, 
And we bring them forward at, during our offering song because God tells us in Scripture to bring our offerings to Him and to do so joyfully. So in just a few seconds here, we're going to invite you to bring your offerings forward. For those of you worshiping online, you can also give by scanning the QR code or by through the app if you already have the Messiah app. It's really easy to do uh, through the Messiah app. You don't have to type in a whole lot of stuff right there. Or you can go to messiahlc.org slash give and give your offerings that way. Your offerings are a way that you invest in passing on the faith to a new generation of people. As you give to our general fund, you help support youth and family ministry that makes all of what you just saw possible here at Messiah in growing these young people's faith. So thank you for your tithes and offerings that go up to make a difference not only locally but also globally. On the other side of our offerings, we will celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion. It is open to everyone because we believe that God's grace comes to everyone. So that includes you who are worshiping at home. So you might want to gather up whatever's close to bread and wine that you may have and celebrate with us knowing that the promise of the sacrament still comes to you as well. All right, let's pray over our offering, shall we? Gracious God, we give you thanks this day for all that you do for us. We now return to you what was first yours. We pray your blessings upon our humble and sacrificial offerings given up to the glory of you. May all that is given continue to help us spread your message of love and grace to the people of our community and the world. We also pray, O oh Lord, that all of those uh, pieces of paper that are going to go to help support the prayer chain for Kairos Prison Ministry be a blessing to those that it, in, in, that it envelops when they use it this weekend. We pray your blessings upon all those strips of paper as they come forward as well. It's in Jesus' name we pray these things, and all God's children said, Amen. Amen. All right, let's bring our offerings and those slips of paper forward and place them in the offering place as we sing our offering song. I have come to give back to you. I have come to say thank you. Please stand. Brothers and sisters, let us take time to confess our Christian uh, faith and let us take time to reflect and self examine as we confess our sins in the presence of God and of one another. Together we confess. We confess to you now our faults and our failings. We have not loved you with our whole heart, with all of our soul, all of our strength, and all of our mind, and we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. Forgive us of our sins and move us to be a faith community powered by God as we offer the world hope, justice, and peace. Amen. The Lord be with you. up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is our duty and delight that we should at all times and in all places Offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who 
on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Remember the night that Jesus was handed over to his death as he sat with his disciples for the very last time as they celebrated the Passover meal. Jesus took bread, gave thanks to God, blessed it, broke it. He gave it to his disciples, and as he did, he told them, Take this and eat. This is my body. It is broken for you. Every time you eat this, eat this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup in the same way he gave thanks to God. He then gave it to them to drink and told them, Take this cup and drink from it. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you. It is shed for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink this, remember what I have done for you. And now, joined together by the power of the Holy Spirit in one voice, we pray together the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us to pray in the languages of our choice. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Just a reminder that we do have gluten-free bread available for those with allergies. Please let us know as you come forward. In the trays, you will find both wine and grape juice. The grape juice is clear. Just take a cup and then place it in the bins on your way back to your seats. For all of you who are worshiping at home, this is the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. I invite two people, if you are able and willing to come forward and help with communion this morning, to please come forward. Be sure you have a mask if you are going to help serve. And for everyone else, we will dismiss you uh, for the Holy Communion in just a few moments.
Please stand. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, through the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus, our sins are forgiven. And in this meal, we remember, we celebrate the new life that we have in Christ. Now, because you have been given this new life, I ask you to live your lives in Christ, rooted and built up in him. Love God, love others, seek to be better disciples each and every day. And may the blessings of the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and every day. Amen. Hallelujah! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, you are the body of Christ raised up for the world. Go in peace. Share the good news. <laughs>